digestive system, the biggest point of the digestive system is really twofold. The first thing is to break down food or drinks or anything that we take into our body. But for the purpose not to get rid of it, but to absorb the nutrients so we can use those nutrients uh, for different parts in our body for different processes. Doesn't matter what type of animal it is, all animals need to digest things, to take things in and break them down, just like this boa constrictor is taking this down. But obviously, this boa constrictor is going to need to break down all the parts of this animal into different small pieces, into individual sugars, into individual nucleic acids, into individual proteins and amino acids. So the boa constrictor can use and make its own proteins rather than use the animal's proteins. So here's our overall big picture of our digestive system. Obviously we're going to start here in our oral cavity and move on past the pharynx which should be familiar to us from our respiratory system and instead we're going to move past the glottis and epiglottis and into the esophagus from the esophagus down into the stomach from the stomach we'll wind our way through the small intestine and that's where all of our absorption happens so again we're pretty much done in the small intestine what our body cannot absorb will then be our waste products, which is few and far between, which will make their way through the large intestine and then leave our body through the anus. But now we're going to get a little bit more specific. Starting uh, up here in the oral cavity or with our mouth, food enters through the oral cavity, and this is called ingestion. Taking something into our body is ingestion. Two things happen as soon as something is ingested, mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. But before we go there, we're gonna break down something. And digested in and of itself just means breaking down of food um, or nutrients. There's two types of digestion. The first one is chemical digestion, where enzymes or other chemicals are the ones that do the breaking down. Mechanical digestion is where a physical structure, like your teeth, muscles, whatever, they are what breaks down the nutrients. So if a chemical does the digestion, it's chemical digestion. If a body part does the digestion, it's mechanical digestion. So we ingest something, then our teeth start to break down the nutrients. What kind of digestion would that be if our teeth break things down. That's right, mechanical digestion. The salivary glands that are in our oral cavity release salivary amylase, anything that ends in A-S-E is an enzyme, uh, to start breaking down different nutrients. What kind of digestion would this be where we have salivary amylase, an enzyme breaking things down? That's right, chemical digestion. Okay, once everything is broken down sufficiently, our tongue will swallow the nutrients and when small enough, now we swallow it and it's in a ball called bolus. The bolus, remember that ball of nutrients that we just swallowed, moves past the pharynx and down to the glottis or the epiglottis. Now, what happens is, so if this is our pharynx right here, we got a tube that comes off and we have got a fork in the road. Okay, this one is normally open right here. This would be our trachea, part of the respiratory system so we can breathe. So air is gonna come up over here. This point, this fork in the road right there, that is the glottis. Okay, the point where the pharynx breaks off into the esophagus and the trachea. Then there's another little flap right here that normally closes off 
this other tube to allow air to go through the trachea. What this other tube here is, that's the esophagus, the esophagus. That's where food comes down, okay? This little flap right here that closes off the esophagus is the epiglottis. So the glottis is the point, the epiglottis is this flap. When food comes down and bolus moves down and we swallow, what happens is this guy, the epiglottis, comes over and closes off, it flops and closes off the trachea. So the bolus can move down the esophagus and doesn't go down the trachea. As soon as we're done swallowing, the epiglottis would go back over and close off the esophagus again to move the trachea back and forth. So bolus moves past the glottis and the epiglottis and down the esophagus through peristalsis. Peristalsis happens right here in the esophagus. That's this tube right here, this main tube that goes down and connects to the stomach, okay, the esophagus. Peristalsis is a wave-like motion that moves the bolus down through the esophagus. What happens is when these muscles contract in the esophagus and happens these waves, it also smashes the bolus down even further. So when we smash, when the, when the esophagus smashes the bolus even further, that's another form of mechanical digestion. Then right here is the stomach. Okay, there's the stomach. So the food goes down and enters into the stomach. This point right here where the esophagus and the stomach meets, okay, that is called the cardiac sphincter. It's basically like a valve to let things in on top from the esophagus to the stomach. Now, so right here, this would be the esophagus. Here would be the cardiac sphincter. So food or bolus enters in here. And once in the stomach, more mechanical digestion and more chemical digestion occurs. Okay, so the lining in here of the stomach has a whole bunch of ruffles and ridges. And the stomach of itself is made up of smooth muscle. So again, the stomach smashes on itself to basically help break down, again, mechanical digestion, to help break down the nutrients even more. Then chemicals will come in and enter at the stomach as well. This is in the form of gastric juice. It's very, very, very acidic, lots of acid. Normal water is at 7.0 on the pH scale. The most acidic, the strongest acid the pro pro that there possibly is, is 1.0. The stomach that's in, uh, or sorry, the acid that's in our stomach, and part of our gastric juice, is at a pH of 2.0. That is the same as battery acid. So it's very, very, very acidic. Uh, so the gastric juice that's very, very acidic will help break down and do chemical digestion on the nutrients while the stomach smashes on itself and does mechanical digestion on the nutrients. Then we'll have now the nutrients is in a liquid liquid form called chyme. The chyme is now going to leave the stomach, leave the stomach into this part right here, which is the small intestine. It's going to go through a valve at the bottom here called the pyloric sphincter. Okay, the pyloric sphincter. P-Y-L-O-R-I-C, pyloric sphincter. The valve from the stomach to the small intestine. Now, the first part, so 
here is the small intestine, the small tubes that there are lots of them inside. Okay? The small intestine the, is broken up into three parts. The first part of the small intestine is called the duodenum. Looks like it's duodenum, but it's duodenum. It's the first part of the small intestine. Okay, so the last stages of digestion, breaking things down, happens at the duodenum. But also at the duodenum, the first part of absorption happens. Remember, absorption is the major piece of what the digestive system is about. Not just breaking things down, but to absorb them so our body can use them, absorb them into our circulatory system and our bloodstream. The duodenum, the first part of the small intestine, is where bile and pancreatic enzymes enter the digestive system. Now, bile helps break down fats and is made right here. This is, this is the liver. Okay, so bile's made in the liver. Then once the liver makes the bile, it'll go to the gallbladder which is this red little green guy right here. Then you have our bile duct, which is nothing more than a tube that will enter, so the bile can enter into the duodenum to help break down any remaining fats that might be in the small intestine in the duodenum. Then we have pancreatic enzymes. Pancreatic enzymes are enzymes that are made in the pancreas which is located here, it's kind of hard to see right behind the stomach. So pancreatic enzymes are made, enzymes made in the pancreas to help break things down in the duodenum. There's some things called villi and microvilli on the inside of the small intestine. So if you looked at the tube that is the small intestine, you have these things that kind of look like fingers on the inside of the small intestine. They're basically, their job is to absorb things. And just to help them out, so this each finger-like thing would be a villi. And then they have, each villi has more finger-like things sticking off of them to help even more with more absorption, and those are the microvilli. Again, their job is to absorb things. Or in other words, we're having things go from the small intestine into the blood, specifically circulatory system So we're exchanging things from the digestive system to the circulatory system. And as you remember, that means that that happens at capillaries. Here's just another picture of the villi and the microvilli. So here's part of the small intestine. Here's those finger-like projections to help absorption. And then you each little tiny one microvilli off of that. In the microvilli, so here's a cross section of the microvilli. We have our capillaries that surround it so things can absorb and get into our circulatory system. So the biggest key here is that the digestive system needs to, its function is to absorb things, absorb nutrients that our body can use. Most of the material, the overwhelming majority of the materials we are going to absorb. Only a small number will not be absorbed. Think about it. We don't eat just so we can get rid of what we put in our body. We eat so we can absorb and get nutrients and make energy. But if they can't be absorbed, they'll continue into the large intestine. Water and vitamins are the only things that don't really get absorbed in the small intestine. They're actually absorbed in the large intestine. So in the large intestine, you're going to have water, vitamins, and waste. The waste is going to continue on through the large intestine and eventually be held in the rectum. Okay, So the rectum is where the, 
the waste is held until you get the feeling to be able to use the restroom and then the waste is expelled through the anus and i want to take a brief time out and talk about a bacteria called e coli e coli lives in our large intestines each and every single human on the planet has e coli living in our large intestines here their job we give them there's these there's these sugars that we can't break down we can't break them down but they're in a lot of our foods that we eat so we give them sugar which is essentially food for them and they make us vitamins so we give them food and a place to live our large intestine and they give us stuff that we need Okay, that's called a symbiotic relationship. They help us, we help them. They give us the vitamins, we give them food and shelter. So that's the job of E. coli in our large intestine. The other thing that I want to point out is we said that water and vitamins are absorbed in the large intestine. So the job of the large intestine is to absorb water so if the large intestine is not absorbing water that means all the water is staying in the large intestine and it'll stay in the rectum that will cause diarrhea when water is not absorbed in the large intestine which means it stayed and diarrhea happens lastly if more water is being absorbed and absorbed and absorbed in the large intestine that means no water is staying in the large intestine that causes constipation so we talked about a lot of things and here is the list of everything that we need to know be able to explain and how everything works for the digestive system and that's all she wrote it's like this and like that and like this and uh, it's like that and like this and like that and uh, it's like this. So just chill to the next episode.